So on that note, let's turn from Balthier to Fran now and consider the obligatory non hume character, which traditionally blesses the Final Fantasy party. Much like Red Thirteen from Seven, Quinna from Nine, or Kimari from Ten, Fran follows the recurring trope of representing a marginalised or underrepresented and often oppressed race within a given Final Fantasy world. The secretive woodland Vera are one of the multitude of creatures found in Final Fantasy XII, and their enigmatic, intelligent nature, delicate build, and predilection towards bows and arrows see them correlative, and in my opinion, strongly inspired by the elves found in Western folklore, and particularly the sort uh, that are characterised by J.R.R. Tolkien in The Hobbit and his Lord of the Rings series. However, that said, the inspiration for Fran and Vera may might may also stem from a more obscure Japanese origin too. And while this is purely my speculative, subjective observation, there's a 90s anime show called Outlaw Star, which was somewhat obscured and forgotten due to the similar but newer and flashier series Cowboy Bebop, and it hinged around space pirates and also featured a strange cat-like creature called Asia Clan Clan, who was partially sexualized, but overtly uh, a violent sky pirate who leaves her homeworld in search of redemption. And this character looks remarkably similar to Fran. And on top of this, when angered, Aisha would also go uncontrollably berserk and transform into a beast against her will, which once again runs parallels with Fran's reaction to the mist during the events of Final Fantasy XII. And it made me wonder if their research into popular sky pirate franchises might have led Square to this obscure 90s curio. Anyway, uh, turning to the events of Final Fantasy XII, Fran proves quite an unobtrusive and reserved sort of character. She speaks when she feels it's necessary and works with the same pragmatism that Balfir has, and it makes them work quite well as a duo, I think. I touched on this whole ambiguous relationship episode with Balfir, but personally I like the ambiguity of it, and I like that Balthier and Fran prioritise a certain professionalism over it, if indeed it is the case, and a certain amount of wit and banter about it too. Again, it's simply a good example of good writing, and overt romance is simply not a component of the Evil East games, so I'm quite glad it wasn't indulged too much by the developers. Furthermore, owing to the ambiguity of it, people are still very much talking about it to this day, much like the Renoa Ultimisia question. So for me, that's just compelling narrative, you know, that it can last and be discussed for so many years. Now, I've discussed freedom with regards to Final Fantasy XII, and mostly so in a political and philosophical sense. Self-determinism, ousting archaic godly forces, is a governing idea behind the game. And through her personal story arc, Fran embodies these ideas of free will and the personal cost entailed in her relationship to the wood. As someone who sought personal freedom and left her homeland, we find Fran is no longer able to hear or speak to the forest, and her own people consider her an outcast. So this is an interesting reflection of the central themes here, but what I find frustrating about Fran is that, beyond this vague notion of quote marks freedom, we don't really know what she aspires towards. On the one hand, living day-to-day as an opportunistic pirate is the epitome of freedom, but conversely, at the village, Fran warns her sister against following in her footsteps, stating how lonely it is. So it begs the question, why did Fran leave in the first place? And now that she has left, what does she want? There's little explanation here, which is unfortunate, and unlike the closest numerical game to feature an ensemble cast, Final Fantasy IX, There's no large chunks of cutscene or game time that's really dedicated to fleshing out respective characters, like we see with Vivi, Steiner, Zidane, or Freya. So, although I like Fran, she is a distinctly unknowable component, and I suppose this lends greatly to her mystique and appeal throughout Final Fantasy XII, but depending on how you look at it, could ultimately prove a, a disappointment when we don't get so much story out of her.